Hey, what's going on everybody? Simple Duck here, and today, prepare yourself for something so different, so outside of the box, it's gonna blow your mind. This build is crazy, and I gotta, I gotta give it up, my buddy Zero Maz, aka Lucian Bardolph, for those of you who uh, hang out in the sewers, you probably know that name, uh, he's a theory crafting guru, and... He, uh, he came up with this build for me, uh, at least for the, the gear sets. Uh, the skills are, are kind of down to my choice, but uh, he came up with the gear sets and the idea behind the build, so shout out to you, my man. But um, this is going to be crazy. Are you ready for this? It is a light armor wearing, Magicka Nightblade, no cloak, no resto. What? What? This is crazy. Let's jump into it real quick and I will show you guys what is going on. Alright, here we are in the sewers and uh, I'm going to start off by running you guys through the skills. So let's go ahead and jump into that real quick. And the skills, there's really nothing too out of the ordinary as far as the skills go. But we'll, we'll walk you through them anyway. So. Uh, our main spammable damage, we're running Concealed Weapon. Uh, for for any Magicka Nightblade who's trying to do melee, this is really this is your only go-to. So Concealed Weapon does great damage. Um, because we're not running Cloak, we don't get the stun from Stealth. Uh, but I'm really not worried about that because we are running Fear for our CC, so I don't really care. Uh, but we do get the movement speed while we're in stealth, so uh, that's going to go really well with something else that I'll show you guys here in a, in a few minutes. But uh, moving on, funnel health. This is good for two reasons. Number one, for for those of you who run uh, stam night blades or any stam class, think of this like your uh, vigor. For for me on this build, I use this like vigor. I throw it out once, and then I get 10 seconds of a hot. You can use it for the hot, or you can actually use it as range damage. If they, you know, if you're fighting somebody who's trying to keep you away from them, just start throwing that. It still hits really hard with this build, and it's a great source of damage if you can't get in close to use concealed weapon. Third, we've got merciless resolve. That's going to give us our eight percent damage buff. It's also going to give us the uh, spectral bow, which. I mean, you can see right there, it's an 18k delve on that bow, and it's not even buffed. I mean, look at look at this. We're going to buff it up. 19.5. 19.5. Uh, I don't know if I actually have a clip of this. I think it, it happened in between recordings when I was setting up clips yesterday. Uh, I got surprised by somebody and just happened to have the bow up. And I crit somebody with this bow for over 18k. I mean, that is... That's absurd! It's so crazy. This thing hits so hard. Um, I have this on the main bar instead of the back bar. Just so that I make sure that every time that, that proc comes up, I use it. Because with this build, um, if you're weaving correctly, it comes up a lot. Uh, we've got Lotus Fan here. That's just going to be our, our gap closer. Uh, it does give you a nice little dot and a snare, which I like. You get the snare for 8 seconds, which is really good, and it's 70%. So that is, you could basically keep somebody perma-snared. But the initial damage is pretty good. The dot is decent. It's not great. But, uh, hey, extra damage is, uh, extra damage is extra damage, right? We've got Radiant Mage Light. Now, this one, you can switch this out if you want to. Um, I use it for two reasons. Number one... It prevents me from getting ganked. And number two, it is my way of making sure that nobody stealths on me. Now you could put Sap Essence there to make sure that people can't stealth on you um, and to get your damage buff, but I have a little bit different way of doing it with this build since we're not running Resto, and I'll, I'll tell you guys that here as soon as we switch to the other bar. Um, but Radiant Mage Light on this one, 50% less uh, stealth stealth damage taken so uh, people who are trying to gank you are gonna have a real hard time and you're gonna keep people out of stealth it also gives you a little bit of max magicka so uh, you do get a little buff from it so that's nice 
ultimate on this bar. We're running melee. We're going soul harvest, of course. Uh, we've got a 14k delve on that one. It costs 50 ultimate. Uh, I know a lot of stam guys are getting a lot higher than 14k. I think my buddy Zero Maz on his stam night blade. I think he's at 16 and change on his uh, incapacitating strike. But hey, you can't beat it, man. 14,000 damage. You get the 20% damage buff for six seconds. You reduce their healing. What else can we say about it? Soul Harvest, awesome, awesome Nightblade ultimate for uh, for running melee. All right, getting into the back bar. This is where this build is going to differ from almost every other Magicka Nightblade melee build. Um, as you can see, I'm on the back bar, and I'm still using dual wield. Now, why why am I using dual wield on the back bar? You might think instead of running resto. Well, number one. I just wanted to do something different, but there's a couple of reasons why. Um, running dual wield gives you a lot of extra damage, as I'm sure you know, and we have our ultimate here, Soul Tether, so if we're hitting a group of people, Soul Tether is huge. It's huge. If you go and you buff up with Might of the Guild from this, swap over, hit them with Soul Tether. I mean that damage is crazy. I mean look okay, let's check it out. Let's check this out. No spell damage buff and we're at 14k on an AoE ability. It does AoE damage, it stuns, it heals you like crazy, and it gives your partner a great synergy. I mean look at the synergy. Steal 15,000 health even in PvP with that cut in half. That's still crazy health. So, Soul Tether is an amazing ultimate, and running dual wield helps keep that damage high, the damage and the heal. The other thing we're running dual wield for is Sap Essence. Um, with this build, you're actually going to use Sap Essence a lot, not just as a buff either, because we're running Dampen Magic. Uh, a lot of people would run Harness Magicka here, but because we're not running Resto, I want as much bubble capacity as I can get if that's the if that's even the way you would say it I don't know but you get a 6500 bubble from this Dampen Magic gives you the bigger bubble rather than getting some Magicka back and Magicka isn't really a big issue with this setup once we get into the gear I'll show you uh, I'll show you why we we don't really need harness on there um, but throw the bubble throw the sap essence and sap is going to heal you for quite a bit in conjunction with funnel health so if you've got the funnel health hot ticking on you and you're throwing sap essence you're going to heal up pretty quick while that bubbles on you so uh, you can actually pick yourself up from low health fairly quickly it still is a challenge I will not lie to you this build is not easy to play without resto but you can do it so we've got sap essence there as uh, as kind of our damage buff and as sort of our main heal. Uh, I've gotten into fights where I've got three or four guys on me and I'm getting beat pretty hard, get low health, swap over, throw on the bubble and just start spamming sap essence and they don't get off me. They just stay there and they keep getting hit by sap and they keep getting hit by sap and they keep getting hit by sap and I kill them all at the same time because they don't pay attention because all they see me doing is sap essence. So it does work with the dual wield on this bar. It works really well. But let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, we've got fear. Don't really need to explain that one. You guys know how fear works. Um, double take. That's going to give us our, our dodge chance and major expedition. And then the fun part of this, I've got Reaper's Mark. Uh, a lot of people who do run Mark will run the piercing Mark. Um, but again, my buddy Lucian Bardolph. Sir Bardolf, he uh, he runs the Reaper's Mark on his Stam build, and it is I I don't even know how to describe it. It it's almost unfair. Um, you can see it gives you the the uh, major fracture, major breach, which is nice. Uh, does help out with some damage, but the reason that you use it is number one, when the enemy dies, you heal for 63% of your max health. That is 
huge. Now, in PvP, that is cut in half. That is cut in half, but still, you're getting, what, 30-something percent of your max health. That's crazy. That's still a really big heal. Um, but the biggest reason why you do this is because it increases your damage done by 25% for 5 seconds after they die. So, kill somebody, turn around, load his fan to the next guy, and just start hitting him. And for 5 seconds, you get 25% extra damage. Now, you can have this up. You can use Might of the Guild. You can have this up. I mean, the amount of damage you can get with... It's so stupid. I mean, just right here, you have 28% damage. And then this is going to give you another 25. Your damage buff is huge with the Reaper's Mark. And for those of you who run in the sewers, if you see somebody fighting mobs, instead of ganking them while they're killing mobs, just put the mark on one of their mobs. Nine times out of ten, because it's on the mob, they think it's someone friendly, and they don't pay attention to it. They kill the mob, then you jump them. It's amazing. It catches so many people off guard because they think a friendly is there, and then you hit them so hard. It is incredible. So, <laughs> Reaper's Mark over Piercing Mark for sure. Uh, I was going to tell you, for Radiant Mage Light, if you don't want to run this, you have a couple options. Number one, you can put siphoning attacks in there if you're not doing well with your magicka management or stamina. Helps for both. Uh, so you can put that in there if you don't want mage light. Or you can put siphoning attacks on the back bar in place of sap essence and you can move sap essence up here if you want to do that. Uh, me personally, I like to have it right here next to the bubble so that this is my defensive combo. That's my defensive combo. So if I have to go defensive, I can bubble, I can sap, I'm getting I'm getting a heal, I'm protected by the bubble, and I'm also doing good damage. Because sap does pretty decent damage. So, yeah, that's the way I like to do it, just like this. But you can swap out Radiant Mage Light if you want to, um, and throw in something like Siphon Attacks. Alright, now, the part that I'm sure most of you have been waiting to see... We're going to go through the gear, and I'm going to start off with the boring part here and just show you. I'm running Willpower Jewelry. Uh, it's basically, it's the same setup that I run with all of my builds. It's all Willpower, all Arcane. Uh, two of them have spell damage. I know most people run three, but if you want to be able to get away with this build and not having to run Siphon Attacks or um, running some kind of drink or something like that, Two spell damage, one recovery. With the way that the passives work, this 169 recovery is not 169 recovery. Look at this. I'm at 1956, right? 1956 recovery. If I go back here, I'm going to take this ring off, okay? So you can see in the set bonuses, I'm losing no recovery from set bonuses. All I'm losing is that 169 enchant. So we're going to go from 1956, 1629, 1629, that is way more than 169. So you got to be careful, let me put it back on, when you do three spell damage because this one recovery is huge. It gives you such a massive amount. So. Doing that can let you do a lot of things differently with your build. Uh, Alright, so let's get to the rest of the sets. What sets are we running? Now, for PvP, I would recommend doing all impen, but I don't have impen for a couple of these pieces, so we're, we're just going to forget those for now. Uh, but again, I would recommend running all impen, but we're running Magnus. We got Magnus on the head and the chest and you can see we're running three pieces of it um, you can run four I'll show you here in a second but um, you get max magicka and you get a recovery bonus which is very nice that's what I needed with this build was a recovery bonus the max magicka that just that's a, a plus toward your damage so I went you know had to go with that but I've got 
the head and the chest they're infused but again in pen if you can um, I have Kina shoulders which you can actually swap out for Magnus shoulders they give you the same it'll give you the same uh, same bonus you get 129 spell damage for the four piece here versus 129 spell damage for the one piece there so um, you can do Magnus shoulders if you don't have Kina or if you just would rather have a crafted piece of shoulders so you can make it look the way you want so basically you're running four piece Magnus and you're running five Torx packed that's right five Torx packed I don't think I've ever seen anyone run more than three pieces of this and 99% of people run two pieces of this but I am going to show you why five piece Torx packed right now is probably the most underrated set in the game I probably shouldn't be telling you guys this because you're gonna put it on and you're gonna come beat the crap out of me with it but let's do this alright so I've got five pieces here I've got one two three four and then a weapon same thing with Magnus I have the weapons now I have Nern main hand and both both bars are exactly the same so I'll just show you one bar Nern main hand with the spell damage enchant on it so you're getting 1480 on the damage bonus so you're getting extra spell damage right there from the sword and you're getting a buff to the enchant on here now it shows 452 spell damage the normal buff is only 348 so you're getting a big amount of spell damage there why because of the five piece bonus increase enchantment potencies by 30 percent weapon enchants this only works on weapon enchants but you're increasing it by 30 percent that's crazy it's crazy talk you're picking up a hundred and four extra spell damage by running five pieces of this hundred and four it's awesome but that's not the reason why we run it the reason that we run it is for this weapon, which is Sword of Torx Pack, infused, and with shock damage. You can run fire damage, you can run frost damage, you do you do really have to run an elemental damage. You, you, you just have to stick with an elemental damage if you want this to work right. But, I chose shock damage because the status effect for it is 10% damage reduction on the target. So. Um, it's offensive as well as defensive. If you go with fire, you'll get a little bit extra damage from the uh, from the hot or from I'm sorry from the dot. And if you go with frost, you'll get a snare. We already have a snare from Lotus Fan, so frost, in my opinion, is kind of you don't need it. Um, fire for a little extra damage, shock for a little bit of defense. And trust me, without running cloak or resto, you're gonna want that defense. So you can see here the damage dealt it's huge it's huge almost 5200 shock damage now let me take off an item here I'm gonna take this off unequip the boots let's look at I don't know anything what do I have with some enchant okay right here disease granted it's not buffed by my champ points but you'll get the idea you'll get the idea look at the damage 2660 versus the Torx pack now the Torx pack that you see on screen now 3990 and that's only the infused buff 3990 if we go back to this 3990 turns into 5200 that's crazy so okay okay you're basically going from 2600 damage up to 5200 damage and that's a difference of almost 2550 you get 2550 extra damage on your weapon enchant now that might not sound like a lot because you're like oh well weapon enchants you know they don't always work but if you're light weaving check this out if you're light weaving which you should be you're getting this going off uh, normally I think this enchant goes off every 
oh, four seconds, I believe. Yeah, every four seconds, I, I just had to check it out here. Every four seconds, this enchant will proc. Now, with the sets we're running, infused reduces the cooldown by 40%, which takes us to two and a half seconds. 40% takes us two and a half seconds. So now every two and a half seconds it's going off, but wait! The Torg's packed five piece reduces the cooldown by one second. So one every 1.5 seconds, this is going off. That is a massive increase to your damage, right? So we already decided that it's 2550 is how much extra damage you're getting. Now keep in mind these are PVE numbers, but it's the easiest way to, to talk about it. So 2550 is the extra damage that you're getting from this every 1.5 seconds. So basically every other swing, because you can swing your weapon every one second. So every other light attack, this is going off for an extra 2550 damage. You're basically increasing the delve of any skill that you use by 2500 damage. Now you, you might think to yourself, well you've already got a weapon enchant that's going to be proccing anyway. The damage, the 2550 damage is only extra damage that you're getting over the base weapon enchant. That's crazy. Uh, if you run something, take off Torx Pact and run something like Julianos or Kagranax or something like that. Julianos is probably the, the best description I can give you. You get 300 extra spell damage from that, right? That 300 extra spell damage only gives you an increase in your delve of 500. It's somewhere between 4 to 500 that you get for Julianos. This is giving you 2500. It's insane. This works so well and Zero Mass has been telling me that we should try a build with this for so long and now with the buff to weapon enchants the time is here. This is the build. The Magicka Nightblade melee build for Dark Brotherhood. This is incredible. So like I said I probably shouldn't be sharing this with you because you'll come with my ass with it, but it's so good that I had to share it. Even though I shouldn't, I had to share it. So there it is. That's my items. Five Torx packed, four Magnus or three Magnus and Kina. Got the Willpower Jewelry, Nern Main Hand, Infused Off Hand. There it is. Let's look at the stats real quick. So we're all we're unbuffed right now, but we do have food on. It, we're, we're using tri food. Max magicka thirty nine thousand. Max health twenty one six. Stamina thirteen four. That's not very high, but it it gets the job done. Spell damage unbuffed twenty six sixty seven. Forty eight percent crit. I mean spell resists are almost at sixteen k. Crit resistance seventeen hundred. Our Magicka recovery is is just shy of 2k. I mean, look, these stats are so... They're so strong. So strong. We've got 2k recovery. Um, oh! This takes me... Okay. The Atronach. We're using increased recovery stone. Um, if you really want to, you could use the spell damage stone, but uh, because everything we're running costs so much Magicka, I don't recommend it. Um, I, I would definitely stick with recovery. It's better to be able to stay in a tough fight than to have a little bit of extra damage, kill some people a tiny bit quicker, but die to anybody who makes you have a decent fight. Um, the extra recovery is going to be a lot better. So I stick with magical recovery. We also are running vamp this patch. Uh, I haven't run vamp for a very long time. Uh, now that the Fighter's Guild passives have, have changed, you do not take 9% additional damage from everyone. Um, the only thing you really have to look out for as a vamp now is uh, Magicka DKs who are running a lot of fire, and you have to look out for uh, people running Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker does hit really hard, but from what I've seen, most people actually have a really hard time actually hitting you with it. 
So there's only been maybe one or two times where I was like, man, if I wasn't a vamp, I could have survived that. Uh, but for the most part, being a vamp is way better than not being a vamp. You get the you get the percent health or uh, magicka recovery, which is great. Gives you magicka and stam, so you get that, which is really nice. Um, but it also stacks. You get movement speed. So basically, when you're in stealth, you take a zero penalty to movement. And with concealed weapon. You get an extra 25% increased damage or increased move speed while stealthed. But check this out. This is my move speed in stealth. My move speed out of stealth. I'm act. It might be hard to see in the video, but I'm actually faster in stealth. And while you're stealthed, you can use major expedition, swap back, and then you're extra fast. You're so fast in stealth. I mean, look at this. Let's uh, let's move on. All right, we are going to very briefly go through the champ points. Uh, we'll start here with the red tree. Uh, I've got 27 in resistant. That gives us 10% extra uh, crit reduction, so it helps out with our impen. Um, the more impen pieces you have. The less points in this you need. So if you do have all seven pieces on your body in pen, I might not put any points here, and I would move those points over here. Um, I have my the rest of my points in the red tree are split evenly between Hardy and Elemental Defender. So we're getting 19.5% uh, damage reduction here. Uh, if you don't need the resistance points, put those points over here. Nothing in the Lord. Moving into our green trees, I've got 50 in cost reduction, so I get 10.5% cost reduction, which is awesome, and then as a Breton I get a little bit more. Uh, 100 in Arcanist, Magicka Recovery, I said it a bunch of times during the, the skills and the gear, but Magicka Recovery is so important in PvP, because People aren't going to die right away unless your name is Lucian Bardolf, and then everyone dies right away. Um, but you need to be able to last in a fight, so Magic of Recovery, 100 points. Uh, I've got 17 into Tumbling here just for a little bit of, of help with uh, Break Free and Roll Dodge. And then all of our blue points. You see nothing there, nothing there. All of our blue points are in this tree, so we get the extra crit. But we are doing 100 points right here. Elemental Expert increases all your damage. Now, Flame, Frost, Shock, and Magic. All of your class skills that you're going to use are going to be magic damage. But your weapon enchant, this is why I said you have to go with an elemental enchant. You can't do like unresistible damage or uh, poison, disease, physical, any of those. You have to do an elemental because of this. 25% extra damage to Flame, Frost, or Shock. We're using a Shock, so there you go. We get a buff there. Uh, 67 points here into Spell Pen, so we've got an extra 36, 65 from that. Uh, you can put more or less points in that if you want to, but my personal opinion, I would say boost all your damage here as much as you can, and then this will boost your damage even more, and stacking this with the Mark is amazing that's the champ points these are the stats again and if you guys have questions about the build or comments leave them down below give this a thumbs up if you like the build and enjoy the clips that are coming up right now and until next time guys take it easy